Hey guys, Clade here. Now that 7.1.5 has been officially released and we are all able to log on and play with the live changes, I wanted to give you guys a quick update since we have seen some changes come to Fury Warriors. This video won't be a comprehensive guide, but it should be enough to get you started. I will go over talents and rotation quickly and focus the rest of the video on my first impressions of the patch and the changes that were made to Fury Warriors. If you just came to see the talents, go ahead with this talent setup for raids. You will now take Frothing Berserker and Reckless Abandon. You can follow the previous priority I have laid out in my 7.1 guide with the caveat that you will now have to reach 100 raids before you use Rampage. I'll be showing you footage from our Mythic Scenarios last night since it's probably the fight I messed up the least on. Our execute phase will definitely be weaker with these changes since we can no longer reliably get in raids from Massacre procs and we are at the mercy of having Bloodthirst crit. You still want to keep your Juggernaut stacks as high as possible, but you want to weave in a Bloodthirst every time it's off cooldown to build Rage and for the off chance that it crits and you can be enraged. The payoff for doing this comes when you are able to reach Battlecry during Execute Phase as you are able to press Battlecry plus Bloodthirst to instantly get 100 Rage, get the Frothing Berserker buff, and get the Enrage buff. You would then follow this with huge hitting executes that would rival the damage you have in your opening combo. The reason why we are switching to these new talent choices is because our 100-20% to HP damage will be significantly higher. You will require a really long fight with a really long execute phase in order for Massacre to overcome Frothing Berserker. This is compounded by the fact that if you take Massacre with Reckless Abandon, your burst windows will be really weak since it's missing the Frothing Berserker buff. Your opening window looks something like Battlecry plus Avatar and any other cooldowns that you have into Rampage. If you macro Rampage, you would actually have to spam the macro since the macro would try to cast Rampage before you got the 100 Rage from Reckless Abandon. After the first Rampage, you will follow it up with Raging Blow, Odin's Fury, Bloodthirst, and Raging Blow. Now at this point, without Bloodthirst, you will have one global cooldown left. If you have the Legendary Helm, you can sometimes get enough Rage here to Rampage, but if you don't have that Legendary Helm, you will most likely have to Fury Slash here. For Legendaries, Helm is now our best Legendary by having a great effect and great stats on the gear. Cloak is now our second best Legendary due to how badly the ring got nerfed. Not only did the procs per minute on the ring get nerfed, but since the ring has no haste on it, it performs horribly and in many situations, it is much better to just put on a high eye level ring with haste. When you first try out the new talents and build, it might feel clunky at first since your enraged uptime will have dropped. I went from around 75 to 80% enraged uptime to 55 to 60% enraged uptime. Of course, this will be solved with our tier pieces and convergence since those will vastly increase our enraged uptime, but it definitely does not feel good at the moment. Enraged uptime is even worse for consistent AoE and execute phase, making it feel even worse since enrage is kind of a feast or famine ability. The more enraged you have, the easier it is to stay enraged. This enraged uptime issue really pushes the need for us to get a 4 set, and the gap between the top players who are able to get their set pieces early and the rest will be huge. This requirement on gear and having really optimized stats will also heavily affect new players that try out Fury. Even with how good my gear is now, the specs still felt really clunky due to the lower uptime on enrage. So there are a lot of things to look forward to when Nighthold launches, since a lot of our gear will come from the raid. Blizzard really needs to also start increasing the reward for Mythic Plus, since running those will become obsolete once Nighthold releases, and you have already maxed out your artifact weapon. And if you haven't maxed it out yet, you should reach it soon anyways, since it's very easy to reach maximum artifact knowledge now. I'll create the new 7.1.5 guide once I've attained the tier pieces and the new Nighthold trinkets. But for now, the talents and rotations that I've shown in this video are going to be the strongest choices. Oh. I almost forgot to mention Mythic Plus Talents. Make sure you take War Machine and Shockwave at all times, and you can choose between Avatar and Wrecking Ball depending on the dungeon and affix that's there for the week. And then for the AoE rotation during cooldowns, you want to make sure you cast a Whirlwind before your opener since that will apply Meat Cleaver and allow your first Rampage to cleave multiple targets. I've also included a new pastebane link down in the description below that contains my updated weak auras to include Frothing Berserker and the Legendary Cloak. And yes, for some reason Blizzard used the same icon for those two buffs. And that's it for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe. An add-on video is coming soon. See ya!